You ready? All right. OK, uh, let's get started. So um, we're going to talk about image automation, building images uh, automatically, doing functional testing, uh, pushing them, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm Ryan Yard. I'm Jordan Calico. And we're from the Rackspace Private Cloud team. Uh, Rackspace Private Cloud, fanatical support, install, operate OpenStax clusters anywhere. That's what we want to do. And we're awesome. Yes. You should totally go with us. Yes. <laughs> so again, automating base image builds for OpenStack private clouds. So that's a good topic for, the, uh, for this discussion. Again, functionally testing homogeneous patched uh, images, ideally. Um, how many of you guys are building your own images? And, oh, everyone, right. awesome. awesome. Uh, are you guys like starting with the cloud images and then building your own, or are you kind of like, we're, we're going to talk about like the tools that are available to use to automate image building. You guys doing it by hand? Show of hands. Anybody building images by hand? All right, shame on you. We're going to show you how to automate. All right, so we looked at a couple options again, not an exhaustive list, but we looked at Oz, VWE, Box Grinder. We had a couple criteria that we were trying to evaluate them on. One, can you run it in a virtual machine? That was a good one. Um, and then, can it do Windows? I don't know how many people care about that, but that'd be interesting if you can not only build uh, Windows boxes and Linux boxes. And then, what kind of distros can you run? Is it only RHEL based, or can you do RHEL? Can you do Ubuntu? Can you do all that good stuff? So those are some of the criteria that we were looking at. And, and the, then, the VM thing is cool because we want to use OpenStack to build images for OpenStack, right? So that's kind of a good criteria. Like build images as a service. <laughs> Yay. Um, all right, so let's just do a quick, this is kind of like talking points. You don't necessarily need to write that down. Uh, this is a definition for Oz. It's so kind of pithy. Uh, some of these uh, are actually using a kickstart, a little juicy kickstart in the back, and then a, the template kind of defines some parameters that you spit into that kickstart. So let's look at, uh, at Oz. So Oz kind of failed in our criteria here because you can't really run it in a virtual machine, at least in our experience. Maybe there's some uh, tomfoolery, boondogglery that you can do to get that to happen. But it also is XML, who yeah. uh, compiles to like <clears throat> Icicle, I believe, and uh, just kind of puts bash in line in your XML, and it's not good. So we're going to show a failed build using OS. There you go. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me nuke this guy. Where's my mouse? So I already built a failed build, and I will build a failed build again. So this is kind of what it looks like. I mean, I don't know how much value you see in this, but the idea being that each one of them has some different output, has different characteristics, it's doing different things. Um, in this case, it's going to try and use um, the Fedora source tree again. We try to build like one consistent image across all of them. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, so oh, there we go. So we got an icicle, but what, ended up, what we actually ended up getting was just a blank image, and it didn't really do anything. Uh, Oz is interesting in that it actually is going to go and use Quamu image, create an image, fire up KVM and libvirt, and start actually doing the install into the uh, disk that it creates. Uh, that's really great if you have hardware. It doesn't work in a virtual machine. Um, so let's look at the next one, VWE. This is actually the one that we picked. Uh, this one runs inside of Ruby. Uh, he's got all the VB skills. So, you know, so it uses uh, a Ruby definition to basically define how much RAM you want, um, stuff like that, the base image size, where it's going to pull the ISO that it's actually going to install with. Um, it then does a, like a VNC thing where it actually types in and sends the kickstart in, and, um, or precede if you're building on Ubuntu. Yeah. Um, Let's look at that. And actually demonstrate a VWE. Now that uses a post install file that's basically shell script or Python or whatever you want to. Um, it will do the OS install and then inject that and run afterwards. So it's not really composable. You have to copy that post install for each you know, image that you want to do. 
So, and each time you run it, it's going to want to run down, uh, download an ISO for every new build. In this case, we're just going to pull down the CentOS minimal ISO and, and use that. And then it kind of hangs out for a minute, decides what it's going to do. And then it'll fire up a VNC session and start typing into VNC, which is just crazy pants. Um, it's kind of cool because what that allows you to do, at least on the Windows side, is that you can then use that VNC session to actually automate some things. Um, so there you go. It, it typed a tab and then threw in the kickstart thing uh, and then starts running an install from there. Um, interesting. Could you install things with the and those kind of things? You could. Yeah, it, for Windows it has the um, unattended install XML that just is like standard and you can have it talk to a WSUS or inject a key or however you want to do that. So we're going to let that kind of crank in the background. This one works inside of a VM, so we like that, but um, a bit pokey on a laptop. So, um, all right, box grinder. This one I, I like, but uh, it's really funky. So whereas Oz and VW will create a, uh, a disk image and then fire up a VM and then start doing the install into that VM, box grinder runs inside of a Chirrut jail. So that's bizarre. Um, so if you want to build RHEL, you have to have the RHEL version of box grinder. Right. Or and somebody ported uh, box grinder to Ubuntu. So I guess if you wanted to have kind of build servers, you could have an Ubuntu box grinder, a Fedora box grinder, or what have you. Um, I think there's some cool aspects of box grinder that I like. Um, it has a notion of inheritance. So if you kind of look at the top here, what I'm doing is I, I've defined an appliance called the juice, and then underneath that I've, I've got another appliance that is just the various juice image itself. So it takes the base image and then you can then start layering uh, applications on top of it. I think that's pretty cool because then you can kind of keep a really standard stock build and then inherit that build. And you can actually have multiple inheritances, so you could have multiple appliance definitions inside of appliance. So you can have like your golden image and then your Hadoop image and whatever, but you, you can compose based on the definitions. So that, yeah. that's kind of cool. I think it's a really cool uh, feature. So we're going to go ahead and kick that off as well. Let's see how our VUE build's doing. Oh, I didn't like that. Um, oh, look at that. It's going to go ahead and SSH in VUE. Beautiful. All right. So right now, that's actually doing the OS install. And if you were to you know, VNC in, you'd see that actually going through the, the uh, kickstart. Mm -hmm. So why would you care about automating stuff and having these images and all these things? We can talk about some post-boot uh, things. There was a talk yesterday, and um, he covered a lot of really great material. How, how many of you guys saw that talk yesterday? Yeah, great. People, uh, the one on KVM, Quamu, and customizing images. There was a similar. A few people. Yeah. He didn't really talk about the tooling. And that's kind of where we're sort of focusing. Um, but he talked about some of the uh, cloud and config drive, so we just want to kind of cover some of that from our perspective. Uh, config drive, here you can pass in a file that, say, sets up some network interfaces, maybe pass in your known hosts, and this is um, what you would do in terms of a metadata service. You can stuff all that in there, and it'll pick it all up. Um, yeah, I think have you guys used config drive? Are you familiar with that? So basically, um, it gives you a partition that contains um, all of the stuff from, that you would get from the metadata service, but it's mounted at a specific path. So it's basically the request path that you would do to the metadata server on a local drive. Yeah. It can be like a CD. It could be like whatever. You can kind of define it, uh, how it mounts that thing. Um, Cloud and I think, is a bit more interesting in the fact that you can actually kind of do some fancy stuff with it. Um, here, this would be an example of uh, installing Chef using Cloud in it and passing in your keys and signing roles uh, and doing all that stuff. This is pretty handy in, in my world. More automation, the better. Okay. All right. Um, problems we encountered. So while we were kind of evaluating things and trying to actually get the stuff going and building images, we started thinking about Snapshots, right? So you guys are all familiar with the UDEV thing where it's in CentOS and RHEL it starts like enumerating 
uh, your interfaces and doing crappy shit like that. So um, there's a, there's actually some, so you know you can set that out and you can go and like, uh, you know, nuke the that trigger, that UDEV trigger. Um, there's also an interesting uh, feature inside of rc.sys in it. If you go and look around in there, there's a really cool dot file that you can drop into Slash uh, called dot reconfigure. And if you put that in your template, it's like a run once file, and it'll actually nuke like users and all kinds of stuff and make like kind of a clean, pristine template that you can use. And the other thing that you're gonna care about is, you know, you have a base image that has a disk of, you know, two gigs and you're building on a flavor with 10 or whatever, you, you want that to automatically um, resize that partition. And if you're using the um, AMIs, they are just one big block device, so it will automatically, when uh, QMU copies that over, it will just need to grow the file system. It won't have to care about growing the partition. But if you're using you know, a standard partitioning scheme, you have to care about that when you're booting on a flavor of a different size disk. Right, so root resize imaging um, and using cloud in it to do that or like in it RAM FS to um, go and resize all your root partitions. These are things that we were kind of encountered that are sort of tricky and you have to worry about to a certain degree. And they don't, it's not consistent across all the different distributions, so. And there's in uh, Fedora, there's a package proposed called Cloud Utils that has that grow part script from Ubuntu. And you can actually run that in like RC local. You have to reboot. Um, I think there's in the new, I think Ubuntu is moving away from the init RAM FS, and they actually have some kind of hook that does some crazy like fake pixie boot stuff so that it can resize that root partition at boot time and not have to reboot. Yeah. So, what if you took this idea of like automating images and maybe using VUE or one of these tools, and you hooked it into a CI system. And maybe you like added some functional testing. And then you were able to like have maybe Jenkins run jobs to push things to a CDN. Could you create like a cloud marketplace? That'd be kind of a cool idea. Maybe you can not only an external publicly facing one, but maybe you have an internal one for your internal customers that are using your private cloud or what have you. So, Kind of wanted to run with that idea. So Jenkins, right, you would have to maybe check like a, for get commits and maybe have a little hook in there that sees, oh, I, I just committed a VB definition. I want to go run that. And then you have tests that you want to run. So maybe you write some stuff in Nose uh, to do that. And you want to do some reporting, make sure it's actually finished. And then saying finished, you'd uh, want to have a job that pushed it out to Glance or what have you. And you so, don't want to manually QC that, right? Like if you have an application that has certain requirements, you want that to be uh, built into the image and you want that to be tested and you want to know about failures. You don't want to be doing that by hand. Yeah. So here we've got a, uh, our build system and this thing has a bunch of Jenkins jobs defined in here that do exactly what we just talked about. So um, we can kind of drill down a little bit for a minute if we look at this. And uh, so you see we've got inside this uh, pre-build script, we're looking at these various um, uh, jobs that we're gonna kick off from here. And they're kind of just a chain of different jobs and inside of like say this, this one here, you have another one that sort of references back. Um, kind of image tester here. This one would have, say for instance, some functional tests in there. Um, the Tempest has got some pretty interesting uh, tests that come sort of in the Tempest project. And I think it's really interesting to use those tests and to kind of build off of them. So we looked at building a nose tests to do exactly what we've been talking about, resizing the root partition, growing file systems, attaching volumes, various things that you'd want to do when you have an image, maybe taking snapshots, uh, all those sorts of things. So that's some of the things that we're doing in our build system. And then ideally, you'd go ahead and push that out. If you pushed it out to maybe Glance backed by Swift or Cloud Files, the ARAC space, with the CDN. Um, and you could distribute this stuff very easily. So that's our talk.
Do you guys have any questions? That was really quick. So we wanted to kind of <laughs> kind of be interactive a little bit and see see what you guys are doing, what problems you're having, and uh, maybe if, if we've seen them or uh, we can share share knowledge here. Absolutely. So the question was, yeah, if uh, if you've if we've had to integrate with AD or Active Directory inside the image, uh, we haven't run any tests for that, but I would imagine that that would be a fairly simple test to run. Uh, and we were thinking that where you would actually do that integration would probably be in the in the post build, uh, so running Cloud in it to actually maybe have a role that goes and joins you to Active Directory or. Uh, connects you to your LDAP system. So with CloudNet, you can basically write your own modules for it that um, can be defined to pull data from an external source. Um, so basically, you can write your own module that will pull data from an external source or if it's local, and you can do whatever you want with that. So it's just kind of like a you know, RC local type thing um, that can be consistently defined uh, across your images. Right. Yeah. You, I mean, you'd have to mock something out. We haven't. We haven't done that. Okay. Any other questions? We're gonna be done so early. I know. Come on, wow. guys. There's no. Is, is there still food in? What's up? Yeah. So how would we deal with like security updates and patching? Um, basically, that's what our. That's what the hook's for to listen to Git. So basically, we would see that we would uh, we don't have like an automated thing for that yet. We'd like to automate that as well. But basically, you would have to go update the definition. It would see that it would build the new um, image and then push that out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you'd have to come up with some kind of versioning scheme or something to let your users know what was you know what was going on with that. Mm -hmm. Another question. Yeah, so we have like a dot file that we we touch or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, do we have like regression testing that would ensure that um, your images are being built against the next version of the OS correctly? And we do not really at yeah, this point. Yeah, not at this point. We were looking at just those, those ideas of growing the file system, resizing it, all those kind of ideas to start. But yeah, ideally. Our, we, our test suite just cares about the things that we care about. So if those come up and it works, like we're assuming that the OS is good too. and. Maybe we should do better, but yeah. Yeah, it, it's just all the, the minor stuff that you don't notice. Like, you know, like you can build this into this wonderful thing, it's not too hard, so you gotta get a change now and it's one phase later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd love to talk about that and if you have ideas about that, because that's, kind of, that's kind of a hard thing to do, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, I, I, just that sort of artificial criteria that we set of can we run it inside of a virtual machine? That was the the one. Okay. Th that was the one. It, it will work across the board for a lot of things. We didn't test a lot of um, building Windows images inside of Oz. In V, we've successfully built uh, Windows images, so that was kind of another sort of criteria that. And one of our guys, Joe Brew, actually um, has a repository that you guys might have seen, and uh, he uses Oz for that. So I mean, you can definitely use Oz if that's what works for you. Uh, v, we just kind of fit our criteria a little better. No. no. Well, you can. 
So a lot of times what's happening... So do we, do we use LVM in our images? Yeah. So the, 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 the little kickstart files that go behind all the definitions, those use LVM, but the problem with those is that um, in some cases that, that kickstart file is... The, the definition language is actually coded that that thing is static so that it doesn't change. So you, even if you go in there and start trying to flip around uh, volume groups and renaming them, then then the definition that sits over the top of it ends up breaking. Now that, so, that's box grinder, right? Box grinder, Oz. Well, because yeah. with with VW you can you you're pretty much building your own preseed or kickstart, so you can yeah. you can use LVM or not. Um, it is you do have to set that up initially and decide on that, and basically generate your kickstart or your preseed, and then that will be used uh, in your images. And that's kind of what I was saying. It's not as composable. You can't. Um, you can't reuse a lot of stuff. Okay. Any other questions? What's up? Uh, cloud -based, um, makes cloud -based the Windows. Is that what you guys are using? Yeah. So we, we don't have a, an official Windows image yet, but yes, we are testing with that. And uh, it seems to work. Yes, sir, in the back. So how far do we customize the images? Do we just do a base OS, or do we have some um, you know, pre-built images for different software stacks? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I mean, I, I think it depends on the time that you need to spend lighting up an instance. So if you need a web server and you need it right away, you'd obviously want to install as much stuff as you can at a time into that image. But ideally, you would do all your customization in post-build using Chef or one of those uh, to, to keep it consistent and up to date. Is, so That's the nice thing about Box Grinder off. being composable is that you can have your base OS image and then just inherit from that and add whatever you want to do onto that. So in, in that, out of the three that we showed, that one is probably the easiest to do that kind of thing. Um, with VW, you're basically going to be have your own post install that does all that stuff that you have to write. Great. Thank you, everybody. What's up? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. What's right. up, man? Yeah, it depends. I mean, for, for our base images that we're, that we're making publicly available, we do not. But for specific customer use cases, we'll, we'll go do that. In Glance, is there a way to let a user move their snapshot across multiple AZs? Um, you can have a is public flag in Glance that will let it be seen by everyone. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that works across availability zones. So I think if you just set it to public, yeah, but then everyone can see it, so that, that might be a concern. Great. Anything else? All right, well, that was it. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.